Super. 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 My doodlies, how are y'all doodling today? It is me, Branky, and my boy. What, oh, this is what's where my boy's I. Name? This is where I talk. This is this is my part. Um, just uh, you know, JJ uh, Jankerson, head of the uh, Daily Doodle. Um, yeah. <laughs> nice jj abrams over you see, here you see what uh, no, it's a spider-man joke there we go <laughs> okay it's fine jj jonas you mean yeah that's what i meant <laughs> okay they'll laugh about well, it anyway, later. it's all good it's the it's the joke of the century okay guys we did it we've accomplished it this podcast is done <laughs> we're seven episodes into the next season and it's just we got it we did the joke yeah we're, we're, we're good. finished we're, good. Um, we're solid well what have you been playing my dude so I just finished my like hundredth run through Halo Reach. Uh, nothing new to report there. Uh, how played... okay? I've I've never played it though. How how is it? Wait, really? Halo Reach. Yeah, I, I fell off. Really? That four I've never finished. That's interesting. So Halo Reach is a, actually a prequel. So it's like I forget what's first. Is there Halo Wars or ha- no Halo Reach? Halo Wars takes place like in the end of Halo Reach, but yeah, it's like Halo Reach, Halo Wars, Halo Combat Evolved. So Reach is the prequel, and you play as okay. Noble Team, and so you're okay. part of the Spartan Three program where they, you know, like in a, uh, did you? So you didn't play Halo Five, is that what I'm getting? I oh no, I finished Halo Five, and okay. I played the beginning of Reach, and I know the prequel stuff, and I know the fall, and I know the ideas behind the main story. Um, and I played the first two missions of Halo 4. I'm just curious, like, how the game is. I kind of burned oh, out after ODSTs, yeah, no, which I never finished, too. It's good, man, because this is the last one made by Bungie. And so it's kind of, it's a completely different feel from any of the other Halo games. So you have, like, their, you know, their really good storytelling. You get a lot of, like, origin tales in there. You learn about how, like, Master Chief and his team they weren't the only series of Spartans, right? So these are Spartan threes and they're, I don't know if they've been genetically altered, um, but yeah, it's like the, the music, everything plays so well on this game. Like the enemy types, like it's, it's challenging. The music is really good and it just, it has a very solid narrative. Like it's the only Halo game that has ever actually like made me feel emotions while playing it. So, I mean, if you haven't played it, like I would recommend it because it, it'll probably, if you played it on normal, it probably take you four or five hours to play, but um. Okay. Yeah, it's if I I think that you would like it. Did you? Uh, is it part of the Master Chief Collection? Did you play it on that? Uh, it's it's on the Master Chief Collection now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So it's updated, new graphics, things like that. Uh, I don't know for sure. I, I haven't like that. Okay. The game already looked really good though, because it came out right before Halo Four did. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, and yeah, that's why I, I don't know why, but I just, like, kind of fell off. I, I want to say it released in, like, 2010, like, the end of 2010 was when Reach came out, because I remember yeah. playing, like, the opening mission and being like, whoa, this is neat, and then I was doing other stuff, and I never tried again. You yeah. were about to mention, though, you've been playing some other junk, too. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I I jumped on uh, Disneyland a little bit more, but... Uh, you Ghost gotta get those tokens, man. I you know. You gotta get those tokens. Get those Dude, tokens. It is, <laughs> that is, like, the biggest fetch quest game in the world. Like, you, you just walk around and talk to people, and, like, you have to do, like, five quests before you even knock off 1% completion of the game. Like, it just... I feel like I'll probably be playing this game till I'm 50. <laughs> and it will be that fun that's the thing it's the best game ever what so what is the is it mini games like i played the connect version of it for a minute and it was just mini games like what is it so now, now that there's no connect you go on like the rides when you go on the rides like a uh, haunted mansion pirates of the caribbean whatever rides you choose they're not all available but there are like the big ones um okay those are those are mini games yeah you do like that you dodge you do have to like match the the letters match the poses whatever it is 
Uh, the rest of the game, though, you're walking around Disneyland just talking to all these people. You talk to, like, Pinocchio, the princesses, uh, and they all send you, like, oh, hey, I lost my magic bow. Can you go find this for me? And then you got to talk to, like, the Mad Hatter, and he'd see if he knows where it's at and stuff like that. So you do hundreds of those missions throughout the thing. You're just walking around Disneyland, and it's yeah. just repetitive. It's over and over and over and over I mean, so. it sounds pretty great. So, how many uh, how many Mickey hats can you purchase with real money in the game, though? That's the thing everybody <laughs> wants to know. What There's are the microtransactions no, like? The, yeah, right. The um, no microtransactions. The currency system's weird in that game because you all you need to really do is do like one mini game, and you get enough currency to like buy everything in the game. Like they assume that you're not going to be walking around searching for treasures and stuff. Like it is the ultimate kids game <laughs> i guess would be the right word for that dude as long as you get maxed out on your mickey bucks and you spend them on a uh, 20 dollar ice cream in game <laughs> that disappears and you have to pay uh 20 yeah, us dollars for them what's your most expensive soft pretzel <laughs> oh man i i did like the connect version i want to say it came out in 360 i played probably 20 minutes of it connect was very janky um yeah. but yeah i i sense connects disappeared i haven't even thought about trying these games that i'm assuming they fixed to play without connect so yeah. like when i was playing this you had to make like arm motions like peter pan and pretend you're flying to do the peter pan mini game yeah so, well it gives you uh when you start the game it gives you the option you want to play the connect or controller and you know obviously if you don't have a connect cooked up you can't play on connect and they say that and then they say are you sure you want to play on connect if you choose the connect option and then they, they first put you on no. And then after you do 10 more tries, if you yeah, somehow want to connect, it might let you, but yeah, and then, but no, man. You, you also can't go into the park if your pass is blocked out. So <laughs> right now, no one's allowed in the park due to real time, uh, uh, yeah. restrictions. So you can't <laughs> go, you can't play this game. Can't actually right play now, the game. Yeah. It lets you hang out in the parking lot and think about the mini games that yeah, you, you can, could do. You when can go in front of the reopens. gate and take photos for Instagram, but you can't actually go <laughs> into the into the park. Oh, Jank! Everybody knows Instagram's so old school. You got to get on that talk. You got to <laughs> be a talker, man. Yeah. It's um. Tic -tic so what else? <laughs> what else you been TikToking? Uh, just Ghost of Tsushima, man. I've been chipping nice. away slowly at that game. You know, I, I was, we we're talking a little bit before the show here that I there's I feel like there's so much to do in that game and so much to see. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know if it's either I'm overwhelmed by it or it's the fact that there's no like fantasy elements, but I'm like having a hard time ho hooking, keeping myself hooked on it. And I know, like, last week I said, oh, I can totally see myself being hooked on this. Now I've, like, done a 180. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely have grown more and more attached. Um, yeah. Before I get into my complaints, what are your issues with the game? And it's going to be mostly positive, but I do have a few nitpicky things. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't really have a lot of complaints about it. It's just there's so much there, you know? And, like, my I guess my big com my only complaint, not only, but my big complaint, I think I, I was chatting with you about this uh, last week, was that you when you go to discuss, I'm someone who likes to have like validation, you know, when I play games, yeah. I like to have, congratulations, you discovered the gray moor or the, the blue swamp. It That doesn't yeah. happen on Ghost of Tsushima. You go and you find these new areas and it, like oftentimes I've, I've been killed trying to go to these areas and then I finally get there and it doesn't tell me anything. It just like shows it's uncovered on the map. You know, I want something to pop up saying like, Hey, you found green tree meadow or something that makes me feel good. But that's yeah, really my I, only I, complaint thus far. I definitely, yeah, I definitely think they could have added something small like that, like a, a little bit of legend growth. Cause you know, they give you that for pretty yeah. much just doing fighting four guys in the middle of a field. Um, yeah, my biggest nitpicks, and I'm quite far, I'm on the second part of the game, the game's three parts, and I'm at the second part, I'm loving it, I think it's great overall, but my biggest nitpick I've realized is that, so the game's divided into main story missions and side missions, and the side missions have, like, essentially two levels of quality, there's side missions that are for specific characters that are, like, multi-tiered, 
Um, and they're all called tails. And then there's mythic tails that get you like something really cool, like armor or weapons or moves or stuff. And then there's just these basic tails that reward you with next to nothing, like 10 of a very easy to find thing, like 10 linen or 10 wood or 10 bamboo or whatever. And honestly, in my opinion, cause they also have like, uh, I don't know what to call them, like radiant style things from Skyrim where you walk in a field and there's a peasant who's there and you save the peasant and that peasant will tell you where another question mark is yep. um, or like where another thing to do is. I think the lowest level of tails don't need to exist. Like I was doing those the other day and I still have a ton of those on my map and all of them are pretty basic bare bones stories. And I think it would have been better to have like, at least a two or three prong version of those and cut like the fat. Cause to me, that's the only fat that I'm seeing in the game. That's the only thing where I'm like, uh, you know, I'm loving this, but I don't really want to do these in terms of like, I don't find a lot rewarding. The stories are, Oh man, these bandits are actually good. Or, Oh, this is this, or this is that. Um, and in the grand scheme of things, like I'd want to do them cause I want to get them checked off that map. Cause I'm a completionist style gamer. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so, so that's honestly my only complaint. Otherwise, I absolutely love this. This has gone from, you know, probably top five to top 10 of the year to maybe my favorite game of the year now. Like it okay. is neck and neck with uh, Last of Us Part Two and Animal Crossing um, in terms of just like games that like I didn't want to put down. And if I'm being honest, it's way more fun than Last of Us Part Two. Like I love the mechanics of this game. Um, it is getting a little bit more annoying on the second island because the enemies are not only they have a lot more health, they're a lot harder. I don't know how many stances you've unlocked. Have you unlocked any stances? Uh, just one. Okay, this I assume the shield one because that's yeah. the next one you unlock. Yeah. Yeah. So every one of those you get, you kind of now need to remember to switch when you're fighting that style of enemy or else it's just really hard do to you, do do you feel like there's too much realism when it comes to stuff like that mm. no i mean for me personally no because like i draw the line at realism with like red dead redemption 2 where it's like oh you're not gonna let me do anything fun and i'm gonna have to ride back to the camp to save because that's the only safe place and now to play that game whenever i want to turn it on because i would love to finish it the writing's incredible it's like, oh, I got to wait for the super long load. Then I got to ride to a mission. Then I got to do the mission, which is 30 minutes. Then I got to ride yeah. back to the camp. There's no fast okay. travel. All right. So for me, like this game has tons of fast travel. The load times are like almost instantaneous. Like, and you, I mean, we've talked about this a lot in Super PS. I hate load times. And this and Last of Us Part Two are just like, I don't know what they did. Like, I, I honestly don't get it. I, I can see some of the areas, like when you're down, it takes a second before it goes to fades to black. And yeah. I think they're doing some of the loading there, but still like I was, uh, did you ever play horizon zero dawn? Uh, no, I have it. I haven't played it though. Y yeah. It's, it's whatever. I'm, I played a little bit of it between uh ghosts and last of us and it had, it was, it was like fun to do the check marks and stuff. And I don't actually really enjoy the combat in that game and stuff. But the, the thing that really pushed me away is every time you fast travel, it's like 45 seconds to a minute and a half of loading. So it's like, oh, man, should I just run this super far distance? And unlike this game, it's it's not very easy to always have a mount in Horizon. You have to, like, keep as far where I am in the game, like, midway through. You have to keep, like, catching them, essentially. And it's pretty miserable, in my opinion. So, like, this game fixes a lot of the issues. And it also has some things that I love, like, from Breath of the Wild, where it's like, oh, there's a cool fox den on the other side, you know? And it's, like, so beautiful to look at this thing. And some of it is really just intuitive. Like, you just kind of go and you want to see what's around the next corner or you climb down a cliff and, oh, there's a duel here, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm enjoying, like, the, the sightseeing and some of the, like, the fox dens and the, the following the birds to the meditation spots and stuff like that. But, um. No, I mean, I, I really like it. It's just I'm, I'm having a hard time, like, wanting to stay in the world. So maybe I need to play a couple more story missions. Uh, yeah. Because I've just, I've just been doing exploration and side quests. So it's not, <clears throat> you know, it's not something, I guess that's not the most immersive part of the game. So maybe I'll, I'll play some story quests and I'll be, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be a little more satisfied with what I'm doing. 
Yeah, and and I'm not gonna say that it's like a game where like when I'm playing, I'm like, oh man, this is so great. I just want to keep playing the whole time. Like there are moments where I want to stop. Like right before we podcasted, I was doing an extremely hard duel. I think I already mentioned this on the podcast, but I'm playing on hard, which is really really difficult and really challenging. And I wanted to do it because you know I heard normal was too easy. And after playing on hard, I assuming that's correct because i i only have a few areas where it's like oh i gotta replay this i gotta replay this like some of the duels are really tricky um so yeah i i had to stop but yeah when i'm not playing it's like oh man i'd love to be playing you know what i mean so it is it's one of those things that where it's like yeah i i need to take breaks too because it is an open world open world game where it's like oh here's the mission do the thing follow this person there's a lot of following Mm -hmm. people in this game and getting story um, and because you can't skip dialogue, or at least that I've found, I have become a lot more invested in this story than like Horizon Zero Dawn, where I didn't care at all. And I mashed skip the entire time. And I disliked all the, you know, I, I always reference this. And, you know, for the people listening, if you go, if you like uh, Battlestar Galactica remake, you're probably going to hate me. But I always uh, mention this as the thing that I hate when fantasy stuff is created or sci-fi is created when they create like lingo like their own lingo for the story that i think is just so dumb that i almost feel insulted like did you watch Battlestar galactica uh no <clears throat> yeah it it's good i mean it's a really well created show and well realized and there's a lot i like there was a character i want to say like starfire or star or something people would know who i'm talking about and they use the the like um the term nuggets to describe essentially dumb people are idiots. And I believe it's nuggets. Cause I remember watching it oh, and feeling yeah. just like yeah, this is the dumbest about this before. Oh man. Oh, it's the <laughs> dumbest thing ever. And horizon zero dawn, not trying to rant on that. That is what that game is like. Oh, these, the skywalkers who sun speak, uh, go to the zoom zom. And it's like, oh, okay, great. Yeah. Thanks, man. I really want to the the Zoomza and the Skywalkers. I mean, oh, it just it, you know what I mean though. Like when it's sci-fi or fantasy, and you're like, oh, I get it. It's hard to write, and I get that you're trying to write. Oh, the you know, like some of it I don't mind. Like long necks, they call like the bronchiosaurus of that game like a long neck. Okay, that makes sense. You know, that's totally yeah. descriptive. Right. But when it's like, oh, the Sun Palace of Asmagul doesn't need to be there, and it's like. Ah, just stop it so that's what i like about tsushima i'm not dealing with any of that it's all based nonsense. on real places yeah i'm not dealing with any of that nonsense fantasy language where it's like these nuggets or this uh bucket head or whatever i don't know they always come up with like the dumbest demeaning words where it's like okay really this is just insulting to people who have a brain um that's that's mainly what i've been playing i mean we could talk about apex all day because i still play that almost every day but is have you been playing anything else no i have not i've uh okay. i started playing moved on to halo uh, combat evolved but i just started it today so that's that's a hard one to go back to without a friend playing with you like i like that game a lot but i do find it i wanted to pl- i want to say i played it like a couple three four years ago and um whenever master chief clash came out and yeah. it was very fun, but it just reminds you, like, it, you know, we're going to talk about Halo a lot here in a couple minutes because our news is essentially just the Xbox showcase. Um, but it reminds you of how old that game is. It still holds up really well, but it is like, oh, uh, there's no sprint. Yeah. There's no aim down sights. Do you kn- um, yeah. Do you know what, like, really gets me about Halo and anniversary especially is the fact that I can't help myself. I want to keep pressing select over and over again and switch it from old to new oh yeah yeah i can't help it do they do they have that in master chief collection still yeah they have it in master chief collection i don't know if you can do it in halo 2 but i know with halo combat evolved you can do that because i was doing that earlier while i was getting you know master chief out of the cryo tank oh man yeah i i definitely want to go back and play those games sometime it's been a long time but like i said for me it really would be more enjoyable to play three Halo three. And I don't know if we each had four player co-op, but I just had so much fun with four player co-op when it was introduced that it's like, yeah, almost yeah, hard to think of. Yeah. Well, playing. especially like the older ones, Halo one, Halo two, like as a kid, I spent so much time in those worlds. Like they're just not yeah. 
really that enjoyable for me anymore. I'm just kind of going back to refresh my myself on the story. Yeah, man. Well, let's let's get into it if you're down. Let's let's deal with the news. Super there was an Xbox One X showcase last week. We were actually talking about it on the podcast. We originally intended to record right after. And when we're done talking about the games, I'll explain why we waited. Um, but I, I would like to go through from the beginning of the showcase, games uh, announced to the end, and then we'll just you know talk about the games first and then talk about what we thought about it. Does that work for you? Cool, cool. Okay, so the first thing shown right off the bat, and it was a very star- strong uh, opener, was the Halo Infinite gameplay, the trailer and the gameplay. Um, they just showed about, I want to say, eight or nine minutes of what it looks like running on, uh, I think, at Xbox Series X. They didn't really say if it was an Xbox One X or a Series X. Um, yeah, what did what do you think of that? Uh, I mean, the game or the way it was running... Just, just the game in general. Like, okay. what do you think of this gameplay from Halo Infinite? I think it looked. I thought it looked okay. Like, I don't understand the whole graphics debate. You know, it's just it. It looked good. It's it's an old. It's they went back to like the color palette of Halo Three, right? So it's not not mm. everything's not so like vivid and shiny. But yeah. I thought that it looked good. I mean, it it, it has a, a lot of new features. Like the grappling hook looks cool. I love the the way that you're not just set on any linear path, you know, all the old Halo games directed you to go somewhere. Whereas this one, yeah. you get to choose, like you saw them bring the map up and you have to destroy that tower and that tower. I know you love towers, but I love um, towers, man. Towers are my love, thing. Love the towers, man. Um, but yeah, they had the towers were like, I love the idea of doing like a, a I know it's not going to be completely open world, but like a semi open map if that makes sense. Like, I love that concept in a Halo game because there's so much, I feel, in in games past. There's so much of the ring that we just did not get to explore, and it feels like they're going to give us the ability to do that in this game. I do have some beef, though, with, like, the story. You know, where is the story going? It, it sounds like this is going to be another game where you have to go back and read like two or three books to figure out what happened between Halo 5 and Halo Infinite. Yeah, I uh, I overall feel very similarly about what they showed. Um, I definitely, yeah, don't think it looks as incredible as some of the PlayStation stuff from the PS5 showcase, but I don't think it's as bad as the internet's complaining. They're saying it looks like trash and... Yeah, if you still frame a couple of the things, it does not look incredible. But I'd rather have a game that's shown that looks maybe worse, and when I play it, when it comes out, it looks better than a scenario where they show me something incredible, and then when I actually play it, I realize, like, oh, this this doesn't look as good. This isn't what they actually yeah. advertised. And I think we're going to get at least as good of looking of a thing as what they showed, if not better, and also, I, I totally agree. I think the grappling hook looks incredibly fun. Um, I did rewatch the trailer and notice that they did keep the sprint. I've already mentioned this to you. My biggest beef is that they took out the ADS, the aim down sights from Halo 5. I really, really like holding the left trigger, aiming down the sights, and shooting. I know that yeah. Doom and Doom Eternal probably put them on the track where it's like, hey, people still like this type of game, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who like it. But for me... That is something I do not enjoy as much. I like that aim down sights, get the real accurate aim. Uh, but whatever. I mean, it's it's a small complaint for overall what I think looks like it could be a phenomenal game, and I can't wait to play it. Yeah, I mean, it's what, – what are your thoughts? So, you know, back to the graphic thing, like it was not – from what I understand, I've, I've read a lot of talk from people of Microsoft about this, but it, like it was not running in 4K – do not have ray tracing on. They have since released a demo online that has that stuff turned on. So I mm-hmm. think that we are going to be getting a, a much better looking game come launch. Yeah, I could totally see that. And, you know, if I'm being completely honest, it looks good enough that I'd be happy to play it. Like at this stage, like I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima. And while that game is very beautiful environmentally, some of those character models are very ugly, like yeah. old school 
maybe even late PS3, early PS4 era like character models, especially after playing Last of Us Part Two, where that game is so condensed that everything looked yeah. incredible. So like, yeah, for me, you know, we're already at this pinnacle of graphics where it's cool to see it even better, but it's not. I said this going into this generation, and I, I feel this every time we change. Like, you know, I'm sure it's gonna. I'm sure I'm gonna eat my words later and be like, man, it's hard to play these games now, but. I'm pretty happy where we're at. I think it looks good. I do want to go back to the one thing I, I thought the biggest fault besides ADS was I think that end of the trailer where they show the brutes talking to Master Chief, I think that was a lore dump that very few people are going to understand, and I think they should have segmented that to like a private video somewhere because for me, it was like the Battlestar Galactica nonsense that I dislike where it's like, Hey, the Atriox and the Hollowed and the Half Man and the this. And it's like, I don't know any of these. I know the Covenant yeah. and the Flood. And I don't even remember the guys from Four, the robot guys, whatever yeah, they're the called. The Forerunners, yeah. The, the Forerunners, yeah. Um, Guardians, yeah. So, like, yeah. I, I just felt like that was unnecessary. It was unnecessary. And that has since become a, a meme that has been circling all over the internet. But the. Yeah, I just if you didn't play Halo Wars two, you'd have no idea what what who the banished were. But he also like they hint at things that happened not in the not in Halo five. Like you, again, you have to go back and read like two books to figure out what in the world is happening. That he's mentioned something where like he's teaming up with Cortana or whoever it might be, and like it's it just feels very weird. And I'm wondering like how they got involved in this, and I, I don't think that. You know, we're going to get, again, another lore dump, you know, either on another trailer or at the beginning of Halo Infinite, you know, say, here's what's happened yeah. since since that. But, it, it, yeah, it's just that's the story is what concerns me more than the graphics. What uh, what what do you think about what they said about Halo Infinite? So they're planning to no longer release any disc based Halo games. So Halo Infinite is the platform. So they're, they're just. I guess going to keep uploading anytime they make a new Halo game, they'll just keep uploading the stories onto the Halo Infinite platform. What do you think about that? Yeah, um, I I don't think that will actually hold. I mean, I definitely think they're done with disc games. I think that part of their statement is correct. Um, but I feel like I've heard this from other companies in the past, like, oh, this is going to be it. We're never going to release a sequel. It's just going to be new stuff for this, right? Uh Totally. If they're able to do that, great. Um, but if I see Halo Infinite 2, like Destiny 2, or like all this other stuff, like it wouldn't surprise me. Um, I like that idea. I've always thought the idea of like a platform that you just update. I mean, that's for games like Madden, for games like maybe even some of the Call of Duties, for a bunch of other games. That's probably what they should do. It seems crazy to me that they keep releasing a new game every year, but people keep buying it. So that's why they do it. Um, yeah, man, I, I think it it's a cool idea. I just, it depends on how well infinite and how, we'll talk about this at the end. It doesn't really matter how well it sells. It depends on the, the response to infinite, honestly, because yeah. if infinite is widely panned and you know, we are living in a world where Sony uh, preference is the majority and the loudest voices. And it's uh yeah, I could definitely see it not getting the review scores it would need to be like that game. Then yeah, it's I I could see them going back and be like, well, hey, we can't we can't do that. You know, I think Hitman, the original Hitman reboot, they were planning on doing that too, like no more new Hitmans. And then obviously okay. that didn't work out. They didn't sell enough. Yeah. Hitman Two came out two years right. ago. Right. Well, they kind of did it with uh, Halo Four, right? They had the Spartan Ops Season One, Spartan Ops Season Two, and those all had condensed stories in them. So, I mean, I, I guess oh, anything's, I know. anything's possible. But, yeah, I don't see them moving away from disc-based games because people like that. You know, people still – there is still a desire for disc-based media. I think after this generation, this next one, the uh, Series X and PS5 and all that stuff, I would be amazed if the following generation, if it ever exists, and if it's going to be a clear generation cut, will have – a media component that is that is physical um i think the cost to produce even though it's not that high is enough that i think you'll still be able to own 
discs and things, but I don't think it's going to be walk into your Walmart. I think it's going to be I am 8-bit or I am whoever, you know, whatever the other companies, limited run, that make physical versions of games that are digital. Because, yeah, man, I mean, especially with what Series X is doing and, and the big, big focus on Games Pass, which we're going to touch on a lot at the end, I don't see really the big draw in a disc. Like, I don't plan on owning Halo Infinite. I plan on playing it for free with my Games Pass subscription. So how many people are going to pay 60 bucks for something they probably have if you have an Xbox? Yeah, that's that's so. true. There's a lot of the the first Microsoft's uh, first party stuff is going straight to Games Pass or all, all of it is what they said in the conference. So I mean, yeah, that's yeah. a good question. Or that's a good point. Y- yeah, so let's we'll we'll get back to that more at the end. So the next thing they showed was the uh the sequel to State of Decay 2. It was just a CG trailer. Does not look like it's even close to coming out. Uh, I wouldn't even be surprised if it's not even a next year game, but more like a 2022 game. I didn't play State of Decay 2 or State of Decay 1. Did you? No, I didn't. But wasn't State of Decay 2 released last year? Like, that's a quick, or was it 2018? Uh, but it feels it like was at very... least two years ago. It but it was like a, a fairly quick turnaround. Yeah, it feels like a really quick turnaround. I. So I, I have friends who like that game. I mean, I, it looks like it's okay. A lot of people are. That was like the highlight of the conference for them. But um, yeah, yeah, it's just it's not something that I've ever really been interested in playing. Yeah, I I need to see a lot more. And I think one of the reasons why it feels so quick is because State of Decay Two was like in development for forever. I want to say they showed that very quickly after the Xbox One was uh, released, like maybe the next year. And it didn't come out till 2018. So I want to say they started showing it like 2015, 2016. And it was one of those games where you're like, oh, this is going to come out next year. And it's like, nope. And it didn't come out the next year either. Yeah, Um, yeah, I have a friend who... Games Pass game, right? That was the... Yes, it came out. So that's the thing. It was announced before Games Pass existed. And by the time it came out, it was part of Games Pass. Like that style thing. Kind of like Sea of Thieves. Yes. Um, So after that, we got to see the next rare game, Everwild. Um, what do you think of that? I think it actually looks really cool. I want to know more about it. Mm-hmm. I want to see some gameplay. I want to know like what what kind of uh, elements we can expect in the game. Like, is it have a fantasy? Is it have an upgrade system or a progression system? What is it? What is it exactly? It, I was mesmerized by the trailer, and like I love you know rares unique little animation style. So I want to know more. Yeah. I am very in, very very intrigued about this game. But I just want to know what it is, you know? Yeah, I uh, I was kind of a little bit bummed out by that. Well, well, we'll get to that at the end. But uh, just to talk about Everwild, um, yeah, I, I'm glad that Microsoft did take a very diverse approach. Like, that's something they did. Like, they have games that are just not there's not a lot of action just action games coming out this is not the sony first party lineup of third uh third person action games or action platformers or action stealth or whatever sony does you know they generally have like one type of game um and i don't mean that as like a negative they just that's their main thing is third person uh open world or action but always action games yeah this is this shows like microsoft has a really diverse approach i am concerned this game's not for me um sea of thieves has no progression system i've heard it's a blast i've heard it's a great game uh everwild did not make me think there's any combat in it or any type of um adversity like it seems like it's a game where you walk around like kind of helping animals and that's i mean that's cool i'm sure that could be really fun i dug animal crossing this year there's a way that i could see myself enjoying it but i gotta be honest like it, it Outside of the art style, it did not sell me on even wanting to boot it up. Like, I've still yet to boot up Sea of Thieves because I know that besides 20 minutes of it, what am I going to be doing? Yeah, so here's my stance on Sea of Thieves because I I did spend a fair amount of time in there. There is no narrative. There is no progression system. It's really just a game to go out with your buddies and sail around on a ship and fight other people and search for treasure. Like there is really nothing more to that game than that. And I know everyone is really excited about what what the game would be when they were first showing the trailers. But yeah, with this one, um, Everwild, like it, it doesn't. I'm a, my biggest fear is that it's not going to have a narrative. You know, it's it's going to be like some kind of survival game, and that's not really 
it, it's it has a lot of potential, but it also like I'm prepared for disappointment. Yeah, I I don't want to spend too much longer on it, but yeah, it, I totally agree with you. I think there is this. Um, just every company is chasing the Fortnites and the Minecrafts, the games that don't have uh, narrative elements that are, you know, the stories that you have from those games are the ones you create with your friends. And I think there's something to those. Um, as somebody who's 32 years old, eh, it's not what I'm going to be doing. I don't have a ton of time to spend, like, trying to meet up with friends to play these games. So, or just to play games in general. So, like, I choose ones that I can beat. Or ones that I, in one case, Apex is my really only live game that I play. Um, I don't know where this was in the showcase, but they did announce a new Forza game. Um, Really not a whole lot shown. Uh, Just the logo, Forza Motorsport. It's not a Horizon one. Uh, I know you've been a Forza fan. What did you think of this teaser, if you will? Uh, I mean, I'm... I'm excited for all things Forza. I mean, it yeah, it, it was just a cinematic trailer, and uh, we probably won't see. I I'm doubting Forza is going to be a launch title. Um, that is insane. That is literally mind-boggling. Sorry, I just had to interject. The fact that like the their main first-party racing game that has been on every single year is going like there's either been a Forza or Forza Horizon every year, as far as I know. It wasn't Forza Horizon four last year? Uh yeah, yeah. Forza so Horizon every Force sing- last year. Yep. Yeah. So they've done yearly releases on either Forza or Forza Horizon, and then they have a new launch console, and they are maybe not going to release the racing game that should. It's it's just to me, man. Like we, you know, we did predictions last episode. This is mind boggling to me that they would be like, oh, this is the year we take off, the year where we're going to try to sell people a four hundred fifty, five hundred dollar console. Yeah, I feel like if it was going to be a launch title, we would have seen some gameplay from it. Yeah, that's I totally agree with you. That's why I'm yeah. blown away. If it's if if they don't show gameplay by like September, it's not coming out this year. And if it doesn't come out this year, then whatever. We're going to have a lot more to say, I'm sure about game releases and companies this year as more and more and stuff is shown to us, but it's yeah. it is yeah. Anyways, we what got a this, lot more to, to Oh, sorry. Real quick, up? what this what this does present though is a Gran Turismo with a good chance to catch up here. So I don't know whoever's going to come out first, but uh this could change the switch the uh the crown over, you know. Maybe I don't see Gran Turismo coming out this year either, though. I mean, it definitely could because they take like four to five years off between each of those games. I don't even know when the last Gran Turismo was. And it's still there. You know, I mean, so they could do this year for sure. It's not like Forza where they have that two year time cycle between each of the companies doing one. So they essentially have every year there's a Forza. Um, The next game uh, was Don't Nod's Tell Me Why. Um. You know, it looked like Life is Strange, in my opinion. Yeah, that's what I was I, I don't have a too. lot. I don't have a lot to say. It's like that style of game, the Walking Dead's, Telltale's Walking Dead. It's it's not for me. Um, it looks neat, though. Yeah, it's I'm very not diverse a huge. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it is very diverse. But it's like, I just, I'm not a huge. It feels like the very compressed storytelling. And I think that it's just not my type of game. Yeah, I, I, you know, I grew up playing games that had a lot of action. Super Mario Brothers, you move and jump. And story is a very cool new thing that got added as games got better and better. Um, but when you take out the action elements and you just have a story and then you want somebody to watch or be like a contributor to that story for more than two hours, that's when I start to struggle. And a lot of these Life is Strange, The Walking Dead, they're like, you know, maybe five or six hours total. But that's a long time to sit there and just make a few choices. You know, you're not really doing a whole lot. Um, then there was like just a Ori Will of the Wisps coming to Xbox Series X. I guess it'd be more powerful. Um, I if it if I'm being honest, I think this was dumb. I think this was a horrible thing to put in this showcase. Uh, Ori Will of the Wisps, incredible game. Um, it's definitely top five for the year. I uh, loved it. Loved every second of it. I don't think this should have been in the big showcase that they were saying was going to be full of mic drops. I think this should have been in a later showcase or a side thing and been like, hey, we're Ori Will the Wisps. It's going to be improved for Xbox Series X. Um, it's going to run 120. Last one, you know, the, the original release could only do 30. Now we bumped up to 60 um, with patches. Now we're doing 120. Uh, what, what did you think about this? This just uh, it- like 
it felt like a space saver. I didn't need it. They yeah. could have just they could have honestly just slipped it out at launch and people would still be stoked for it. But it's just yeah, I, d- totally I don't think agree. it needed to be on the on the conference itself. I am a hundred percent there with you. And then the the next thing was actually pretty cool. Obsidian started doing all of its stuff. It started, I want to say, with grounded, which I think comes out soon. Um, yeah, it's uh, July. Uh, is it July twenty eighth? It's supposed to come out this week. I thought the the ba- the demo for it or something. I don't know. I mean, it's a Games Pass game, so for me, it's just like, oh, we'll come out at some point. We'll play it. I don't have to work. You know, I don't even have to think about it because I'm not gonna be paying money for it ever. Yeah. Um. I I think it looks neat. I don't. Again, it's like a survival play with your friends style thing. It's got a little bit more there for me than, you know, maybe you see of Thieves or one of those other games. But I don't. Yeah. Unless I have friends playing, I don't see myself playing it. Yeah, July 28th. I mean, I'd be down to try it. Yeah. I mean, maybe you and I will try it. Maybe we'll bring Donna. You know, I mean, maybe. But I don't see myself dunking a ton of hours into this thing unless, you know. Well, it's a survival game. I I have a hard time playing games I can't play by myself. Yeah. You know, like, it's so hard to court as as an adult. It's so hard to coordinate schedules with other people, you know, especially when they got jobs and kids and stuff so it's really that type of game is really hard for me to to be able to play even if i wanted to yeah yeah i i'm i'm totally there with you and then the next thing they showed was some dlc for uh outer worlds um i it looked cool looked really neat i assume you go to a different planet in the dlc um my only real did you play the outer worlds before i talk no i honestly like forgot that i wanted to play it until i saw this dlc Oh, it's 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 fun. Um, I don't love it as much as Dr. Donna, but I do think it was a good, fun Fallout style game. I definitely lost interest about um about sixty percent of the way through. I'm playing it on hard, which isn't like a thing I normally do, but I heard that game was really easy on normal. And totally true. Like I beat most of it without even thinking. Like some of the combat was pretty tricky till I got to where I'm at now, where everything is so mind boggling difficult that my choices lower the difficulty or struggle and i don't think the combat is that much fun to struggle so i just haven't gone back and lowered the difficulty that's literally been like my thing because i'm like i uh, you know just a stubborn person um i the one the one thing to mention about this this thing was if i read it correctly this is the only thing that's not free with games pass so games pass has a second portion to it where like oh you get all these games for paying for the monthly sub but if you want to buy DLC, DLC is purchased and you get like 10% off or something. So yeah. if I'm correct, this is one of the things where it's like, you're not getting this. You know, you get Outer Worlds, but you have to pay. This is like the one, I think the only, well, no, no, there's another thing we're going to talk about. There's like two things in this whole showcase where you may have to pay money for it. I'm not 100% sure. We'll find out when it launches in September. I'm, I'm curious if this has anything to do with like the maybe they're not it was uh they're not recouping the cost of the game by putting it up on games pass so i wonder if that's you know the dlc is is supposed to clear that gap but it, yeah it just it does seem interesting to me that they wouldn't give you dlc also yeah because i i could have swore that was something they brought up like t- a couple months ago is like dlc for games pass games is either gonna be free or i thought there was something like that but maybe i'm totally wrong um, I just thought it was interesting because the rest of the showcase was so like, hey, you, you have Games Pass? This, you, know, you get this. Don't think about it. And this was like, a, oh, okay, yeah, I have the game. I, I do need to pay for this. I didn't finish the main game, so I don't know if I'll be paying for this. You know what I mean? It, it was a weird thing. It wasn't like a big like, oh, man, they did this. It's, they should be able to charge for stuff. Some games should cost money for sure. You know, even yeah. if we pay like a $15 monthly sub. Uh, and then the real big Obsidian news was the uh, the trailer, which looked like it may have been actual gameplay at the very end there for their thing called Avowed. Their uh, In the World of Pillars of Eternity looks like an Elder Scrolls style game. Yeah, so that was a surprising trailer. So most of the Pillars of Eternity games are they're top down, right? Because they're based on the... Yeah, CRPGs. Yeah. So this one actually looks like it looks really cool. I'm I'm do you think it'll be a first person game? I think so. It looks like a, yeah, like you just said it looks really cool. It looks incredible. Um I'm hoping that that very last shot was in game. I, I want to say it was. It looked like it was in game. So I'm hoping it is cuz it just looks phenomenal. 
Um, it's definitely one of the most exciting things that I saw in the showcase. Um, you know, we got a few more things to talk about with it. So, yeah, uh, the next thing they showed was As Dusk Falls. It's like a storybook style game, um, a very diverse uh, game with a diverse cast of characters. And I'm using that word a lot because that was the keyword that Microsoft used when they want to say it. Not just about the diversity represented in the games, but about the games like being not just third person action, third person adventure. This is looks like it's another kind of tell me why style. You know, you click some choices. The game. Oh plays, yeah, that's the one with the the, story. with the dad, right? The mom and yeah. the robbery. The daughter, the and then they store. they grow up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks cool. I if it's very very short, I may turn it on. You know, it's part of Games Pass. But yeah, I I can't really say a lot to it. I I think it's neat when they show stuff like that. But it wasn't like whoa. You know, it didn't stand out to me. Um. The next thing was Jack Black from um, doing like a musical montage for Psychonauts two. Uh, yeah, what do you think of that? Uh, I okay. So here's I know Psychonauts is it critically it was considered a failure, but or not, but or commercially it was considered a failure, but it gathered this big cult following afterwards. I just like I'm look I I've never played the first one and I'm looking back at it. if I play the second one I'm gonna want to play the first one and I just don't think I have the ability to do that just because it looks so old. So as for the Jack Black thing, I think it's cool. It's awesome. Like I was thinking it was maybe gonna be Brutal Legend two. How have been fun? Um, yeah, but I mean it's like, am I excited for Psychonauts two? Not really. I'm probably not gonna play it. You know, I if I ever have time to go back and play the first one, I don't know if I'd do it. You know, what What are it's, your thoughts, though? Yeah, I, I played some of the first one. It's an original Xbox game. I want to say I picked up on Mac at some point. That's where I played it. Uh, it's cool. Uh, sure, I'll play Psychonauts 2. I don't think what they did there um, was worth showing. I think it would have been better for them to leave it out. All they did, the only thing they did there was say, it's not coming this year, and then do a spoof. And it's like, yeah. okay, uh, that's some, they need stuff this year. And all that did was make me feel like, oh, okay, this year has even less than I expected. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next thing was Destiny 2. Optimized for Series X. Again, I I don't get why they put this in the showcase. I know there's a lot of Destiny players. I don't think this was a... They should have done the pre-show. Like a bunch yeah. of the other cooler things they did in the pre-show. Like Dragon well, Quest XI. There should have been like a... Stuff. Yeah, there should have been a joint announcement. You know, something like... Oh, and by the way, had Phil Spencer get up there and be like, "Oh, by the way, you know, Destiny, Ori and the Will, and the Will of the Wisp, and whatever other games are going to be upgraded for Series X." You know, it, they didn't need to each have their own thing. Yeah, it, it, like it's it's strange. Um, like I said, they had a pre-show. They have Dragon Quest Eleven, the Switch version, coming to Xbox, part of Games Pass. They had stuff announced there that's like, okay, you you could have put that in here instead of this because that would have yeah. been new. This is just yeah. the old game coming to the next console, which we already know about. It's getting optimized. Um, the next one was pretty cool. Stalker 2. I've always wanted to play the original Stalker. Um, Stalker 2 looks incredible. I hope this game comes out. I want to say it's been in development hell for like 10 years. So, you know, it looked cool. I'm not expecting it to ever release. So we'll see. But uh, do you have any yeah, thoughts? So, so I, yeah, I, I would like to, I mean, I want to go back and play Stalker 1. I had heard good things about it. Uh, Stalker 2 looks okay. I Yeah, I don't, uh, it's not on the top of my to play list, though. Yeah. Did you play Warhammer Vermintide? No, that was actually a really surprising trailer. I didn't think there was enough people who cared about that franchise to like really make it a, hey, guess what? If you buy Xbox Series X, you could play Warhammer. Yeah, Dark Tide. Um, yeah, man, uh, I knew Vermintide was popular because they made a sequel. I did not think it was that popular that they'd make now a 40K spinoff because uh, Warhammer, the tabletop game, that comes from the fantasy one, the Vermintide. This is from their mm -hmm. sci-fi version, 40K. Oh, uh, whatever. I played like uh, 20 minutes of Vermintide. It's fun. It's Left 4 Dead. It's Left 4 Dead and Warhammer. It's actually a really well-made game, and you get like loot and stuff. But it's a game you need to play with four friends to have like a lot of fun. And I don't play a lot of 
multiplayer game. So it's like, oh, neat. The next yeah. game was Tetris Effect Connected. I heard a lot of good things about Tetris Effect when it came to PS4, I think two or three years ago now. Um, that's neat. Um, I definitely didn't think that was like a whoa moment that this three to four year old game is coming to Xbox, but with multiplayer, but that's cool. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, that's, um, yeah, I wasn't really sure. Like, I thought that was going to be just another, um, you know, we have gamers of all different types commercials, and then it ended yeah. up being for Tetris, so that was kind of surprising that it was a Tet. I don't think there's been a Tetris commercial on, like, a Xbox conference ever. Yeah, um, yeah, I it, it's cool. Uh, I, man, and I am so nitpicky about this conference. I feel bad. I think I had way too high of expectations. I think this should have been a pre-show announcement. When you're showing a game that's three to four years old, it just is not as exciting. You know, like, yeah. yes, it was a very well-liked PS4 game uh, and PSVR game. This is losing the VR elements and it's four years old, but it's adding multiplayer. So, you know, that's neat. The only cool thing about it is it's part of Games Pass, so I don't have to pay for it. So I will definitely play it. Um, the next one's from one of my favorite development teams of late. This I can't remember their name, uh, but it's called the Gunk. I think it's I think their team name is Steam World, whatever. Or um, it's from the Steam World team that they make Steam World Dig and Steam World Dig Two and Steam yeah. World uh, Quest and Steam World uh, not Tactics. I can't remember the Steam World Heist. And those four games, I've played all of them. I own all four of them on Switch. They're all incredible. I don't, this trailer didn't look great, but hey, I love that team. I'm willing to give them a shot. Did you have any uh, thoughts about it? So I, it, that was another game that was kind of like out of left field for me, you know, and I I don't know if I'll play it. I don't know if it's just my style game, but I did yeah. watch it thinking that like, oh, this is by that same team. You know, my good friend Branky Poo would probably be interested in playing this. Yeah, um, they're all pretty fun games. Like, D uh, Dig 2 is probably one of the more fun Metroidvanias. I don't think it's the best one on Switch, but yeah, so I'll give it a shot for sure. I, I think that's one of actually the more exciting things besides Avowed, because I think it will probably release within the next six to nine months, which makes me feel like, whoa, okay, that's cool, because their games yeah. are generally small, so I'll get to play this. The next one you were excited for, I'm not interested in at all, uh, Bloober Team's The Medium. I don't know who Bloober Team is or really much about this, but what do you think about it, my man? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited about it because like, I, I, I'm hot on the heels of Alan Wake, right? I just got done playing through that whole franchise, and I like that style of game. I love the, like, the first-person storytelling. Uh, what really kind of put it over the top for me was the... Uh, being able to see into both worlds at once. Like, I think that that is a really cool feature. Like that's going to create some very challenging uh, moments within the game itself. And I, I don't know. It's just, I, I feel like there's, there's potential for a really good story to be told there. And I'm hoping that it doesn't disappoint, but you know, it, out of everything except for Halo, you know, this is one of the ones I'm probably the most excited about. Oh, okay. I, I did not feel that at all. I mean, I love Alan Wake as well. I just, I don't know who Bloober Team is. I probably should have researched them, but they must be large enough that they have that in the title, Bloober Team's The Medium. So, I, I mean, that's not the title isn't Bloober Team's The Medium, but people mention Bloober Team. So I don't know what they've done. Maybe I should be excited. The trailer didn't sell me. I believe that trailer was also shown two months ago at the third-party showcase, which, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit at the end, but that was another reason why I was like, okay, uh, great. And I, I could be wrong, but there was something identical to that shown um, in the uh, May showcase. Next thing they showed was Fantasy Star Online 2. And this is when I was like, why? Why? This is on Xbox One right now. Why are they showing this? The game's eight years yeah. old. Yeah. Yeah. I okay, so it's not I thought it was a new Fantasy Star title. Okay, so that's I yeah, mean that's kinda it's weird. a colon new Genesis, but from what I've gathered, and this is I was watching the giant bomb cover of this, and uh Jeff Gersman is like a huge fan of Fantasy Star Online 2, and he's been playing it since the Jap Japanese release, which I want to say was 2012 or 13. And it sounds like this is just catching up with the PC Japanese release. Because when it okay. came on uh to the West, it was like kind of far behind. So I guess that's I'm the not advantage. 
Yeah. Oh, I was gonna, I, yeah, I guess that's the advantage of having like late releases in North America. Yeah, so it's catching up and they got yeah, but it's not even like further ahead. It sounds like it's just catching up. So, I don't know. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it'll be a new thing that somebody could jump into, but having Fantasy Star Online 2 in the title makes me think it's maybe like a DLC expansion and that to me is like just no reason to be excited for that. There's nothing yeah. great about that. Um, yeah. I know Dr. Cool. Donna likes Fantasy Star Online 2, so I don't want to like, you know, I didn't play it, so I can't say it's bad. I love the original Fantasy Star Online, but I'm just not super excited for a uh, DLC for an, a, you know, seven to eight year old game. Yeah. Like, yeah. Of that. course. Um, I, I mean, I am, uh, I've, I've been curious about the series, but like, I just don't have time to get involved in a, in an online, another online game. Yeah, yeah, definitely those times have passed. This next one was really interesting because the trailer was really cool. Remedy is doing a single-player mode for the Korean military shooter Crossfire X, which I want to say that was announced either a year or two ago at an uh, E3 Xbox showcase. Uh, Crossfire X was. It's still not out yet. Um, and yeah, Remedy's doing the single-player content, which is another thing that's not part of Games Pass. So if you want to play that, you're going to have to pay for that single player version separately. Um, I wonder uh, if it's going to be part of their remedy universe in some way, but um, yeah, I know uh, there's like crossfire HD and then crossfire X crossfire HD is like the multiplayer game. X is the single player game. Yeah. It's uh, I, I, I don't know, man. I for me, it's you know, it's a very diverse thing. It's very cool, like not the same as all the other stuff. Oh, you know, here we got this multiplayer thing, and then we're adding this single player thing by Remedy, you know, a really highly lauded company and development studio. And it's like, I just don't care. I didn't care about Crossfire X when it was announced originally. I'm glad that they're doing stuff like that. I again do not think that is a drop the mic moment. That's no. like a oh neat. Okay, yeah, Remedy, they're big. Uh, they did Control, which I didn't love, and they did Alan Wake, which was great. And then they closed off the show um, with Fable. Yeah, um, a Fable CG trailer, not one second of gameplay. Yeah, um, we, we won't see that for like three or four years. I just, I can't believe it. I, you know, I made this prediction like last showcase, and I was pretty positive this Fable game was going to be a launch title. One of the reasons why is Playground, uh, the the creators of Forza, I want to say they were rumored to have started working on this two or three years ago. So yeah. I thought we were going to at least get some gameplay with, at the latest, a spring 2021 title, like a very close to launch window. We don't have a time frame at all. Um, yeah, there's it was... It was one of those trailers that kind of it felt like fan service, kind of like the Elder Scrolls Six trailer did last year at E3. Yeah, like oh, it was that was just two like, years oh, ago. Oh, hey, man. by the way, yeah, by the way, there's this, and then uh, you know you probably won't see it if we're even working on it. You probably won't see it for a good two to three years. So I'm I'm hopeful that I'm wrong. I'm hopeful that what they had said we're going to get more of these another showcase sometime before the year's over. Hopefully we'll see more fable stuff out of that and you know it'll be a next year release, but I'm doubting we're going to see it anytime within the next like 6 to 8 months. Yeah, man. I uh that that was so disappointing for me. Like not seeing the reveal, like I'm glad they did that. I guess the only thing more disappointing would be if they didn't do anything with fable. Um, yeah. but I have to be honest, that was, that was like when I felt like that quote that Phil released before this thing about it being a showcase full of mic drops. I, I like Phil a lot. That was the wrong quote to release. <laughs> um, what he should have said is this is something that proves that games pass is great and games pass. Is, everybody knows games pass is great at this point. If you don't know it, you are crazy. It is a excellent service for 15 bucks a month. You get all the first party Microsoft games when they release, you don't have to pay any money for them extra. And then you get yeah. a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. This was one of those things where it's like, I, I don't, what's the series X launching with besides halo. Yeah, we don't know. They they had said a couple of those games were uh, launch exclusives. I don't Control, remember. Yeah, launch yeah, exclusive was the or like, like launch remember. timing exclusive. 
yeah, I don't remember exactly what they were. I know Halo will launch with the console, but I mean, I don't remember specifically what else. I mean, we didn't get a release date. There's a lot of things that we don't know anything about, you know, and like it was with the last generation, like we knew release dates months and months in advance, but here we're closing in on, you know, October, November, and we're, we're, we don't know anything. Yeah, man, I, uh, I'm a little bit down on the showcase and I feel bad because I do like Microsoft as a company. I don't think the showcase was necessarily bad at all. Um, but I definitely think it was hyped up to a level it should not have been. Um, it was a great reason again to why you should have games pass because you're going to get all this cool stuff. All this stuff's going to be updated, but I'll be honest, they did not sell me on buying an Xbox Series X. If that was what it was for, I don't feel like I need one. I have an Xbox One X. I mean, besides maybe getting a slowly downgraded Halo, what do I care? Well, that's, I mean, and that's where the hope that before the holidays get here, we'll see another game showcase that will really, like, solidify why someone would want to buy this console. You know, I don't think that it was any more or less impressive than what Sony was doing, you know, and like my big thing is I will buy a console. If there's, if I'm going to buy a console at launch, I will do it. If there's at least three things that I want to play on it immediately, you know? Yeah. But like, I'm not seeing that from either of them right now. Like what's selling me is, is, yeah. And what's selling me is Halo and I can get a downgraded version of Halo. I don't need, you know, for, for on games pass for free. So I don't really need to go out and spend the, the $300, three or $400 it, it might oh, cost. Oh, I think it's going to be more than that, man. I think it's going to yeah, be like well, $450, 500 We don't didn't tell. Nobody pricing. knows. Yeah, yeah, nobody knows anything. So, I mean, if they're gearing up for some kind of holiday season push, they need to do something soon. Yeah, I I don't know, man. I, I've never felt less confident in video games as just an idea than this year. Obviously there's a global pandemic that is slowing the, the, you know, creation and the distribution and all of that stuff. But that started in March. Um, and people can still work from their homes. You would imagine that a lot of this stuff was already good and well done since most games take three to four years to make. And it is weird to see like us get to what should be a finish line for a lot of people and have no knowledge of anything in sight. I mean, PlayStation has what Spider-Man Miles Morales, yeah, like essentially Spider-Man. a smaller spinoff. And, you know, I, I'm way more interested in Halo than I am in that. But the, the one thing I did like a little bit more about the Sony showcase was they did the thing that Sony always does where they showed us a bunch of stuff that's nowhere near done. And, you know, We'll get it when we get it. Um, but Microsoft, while they did show us stuff that's probably close to release besides Fable, they they didn't, like, make me stoked. They didn't do the perfect dark. They didn't do um, any of the other, like, rumored announcements. I was really disappointed that nothing was really surprising, like, even Avowed. Like, it was surprising that we saw it so early. But even that, it's like... You had to imagine that Microsoft was buying Obsidian for something besides Outer Worlds, because Outer Worlds was uh, on PlayStation as well. Yeah, well, I, in the the guy at the end, Matt Booty, I think his name was, said that yeah. you know we didn't get to show all of the stuff being worked on by our first party teams, but we're going to have another uh, games showcase before the end of the year. So, I mean, hopefully that means come September or October, even we'll get another games showcase that will really show off what Microsoft's been working on. I'd, uh, maybe like it was foolish of them to to not show some of these other things closer to, uh, you know, right now. But who knows, yeah. man? I, we could, it could turn around. I'm sure Sony will do one more thing before the la- the uh, release date I, of the next gen. I, I wouldn't would hope. Be, I wouldn't be confident. I just, Sony is, they have been canceling their showcases left and right. And they showed a game coming out and the rest of their stuff is like third party stuff. Um, yeah. Real quick, one last gripe that I wanted to mention that I have is that a lot of this stuff that they showed in the showcase was previously announced. Besides um, Avowed, the Gunk, um, that Warhammer game, 
and Fable, I think. They're oh, they're oh, and that uh, the um, the Dusk Falls, the 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 storyboard looking okay. game. Uh, yeah. A lot of that stuff was previously shown. Everwild was shown at XO 2019, I want to say. Um, the Medium was shown at the May Showcase, I think. Um, Halo Infinite's obviously been shown a bunch. Uh, you know, first gameplay. Oh, and State of Decay 3, I guess they did a CG trailer for too. Um, so for me, it was just a bummer. Like, I was really hoping that there was going to be at least three or four things I didn't know about that I was like, whoa, whoa, it's happening, you know? Like, yeah, Perfect Dark is going to be made yeah. by... The, and I was wrong, it's not the Coalition. They, they do Gears War. It's the Initiative is the Quadruple A studio. A lot of people had rumored that there was going to be a superhero game. A lot of things were in talks, like... And it's just... Maybe it's just the year. Maybe it's, you know, we're going to have to get used to a world where things don't come out at the steady clip they've been coming out at. Um, but it's... It was just... In my mind, it was just crazy to see what I thought was an okay showcase being touted as like, a, this is going to, you know, break the bank. Everybody's going to be like screaming and going wild. And it's like, uh, it's okay. You know, it's not bad. It just so, wasn't like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, I, I have one. I have two final gripes, actually. One was the lack of gameplay for Hellblade. I was really hoping we'd see. Oh yeah, I forgot they showed some that. Of that. Like they had Ninja Theory was on there. They're talking about Hellblade, and they gave the thank you for all the people who bought, you know, Sinwa's Sacrifice, but they didn't show anything from the next Hellblade game. And yeah. that was, uh, I don't know. It just like it makes me wonder exactly how far into development that game actually is. Yeah, they showed an advertisement for Iceland. That's what they yeah, really showed. Right. It was like, hey, it was a, hey, it was we, a tra- we did this in it Iceland. Was a tourist. <laughs> it was a tourist commercial. Uh, my other gripe was the complete lack of presence in Gears, right? We were hoping Tactics would have a yeah. Games Pass release date, but we didn't oh get that. Oh, my goodness. That game came out on PC in April, and at, at yeah. the very least, I thought, oh, this is going to be a Series X launch title, at the very least. And yeah. now, now we don't. We still don't know what's coming. It could be a launch title. They could just say, hey, it's coming out tomorrow because the game's done. But it's just so frustrating to be like, I actually would love to play that. I don't have a PC that's, and I have a Mac that's not even powerful enough to run in boot camp, and so I can't mm-hmm. play it. And it's like, okay, don't tell me when that thing's coming out. And they, the thing that made me the most upset is they said in like a press release that they talked about the optimization for Xbox Series X for uh, Gears Tactics, and I yeah. don't remember them mentioning that game in the show at all. So I don't know what happened there. I don't know what's going on. Um, I don't know, man. We could, we probably will have a lot more to talk about this on next podcast too, because I, I don't see there being very much news, truthfully. So we'll probably have a lot to talk about this and the missing Switch stuff, and all of the other things that are going on in gaming. Hopefully, there will be some direct, and hopefully, they'll announce the other showcase. Hopefully, the Ubisoft Forward will actually be interesting and not just stuff we already know. But gaming's in a weird place right now, and we're gonna see what this year is gonna be because it's, uh, it's been a decent first half so far but it's definitely been strange to not have anything really besides halo on the horizon that i'm very interested in yeah yeah so um you know on an op op not to x sorry i don't know what i'm trying to say off uh topic xbox thing uh let's talk about playstation for a minute do you believe any their rumors started surfacing this morning about a possible god of war game being a launch title whether it's god of war 2 or just something in the god of war universe they're saying it might launch with playstation uh the new playstation have you heard anything about that i've no i didn't even read this rumor man i read gaming news every day and i didn't see it so um i mean that would be cool i think playstation definitely needs more than just um you know a spider-man dlc thing to come out but you know I don't, uh, I don't really see them like preparing for, I don't see them. They wouldn't do that. They, they had a big showcase. I just don't see them being like, oh yeah, we didn't, we left that out. You know, it's like, oh, we're going to put this big, big system selling title and we're just not going to show it. We don't want to, I don't see that. Well, apparently it's going to be, I don't know, release. It says release. Oh, never mind. Okay. So it says here. God of War 2 will reportedly be announced in August and released in 2021. So, I mean, who knows? It's possible. Yeah, yeah, it's totally possible. Um I just don't see uh I just don't see it like happening, man. 
Um, yeah. Do you have anything? Uh, do you have anything else that you want to talk about with uh, Xbox? No, showcase? I think I think I'm good, man. We we covered it from front to back. We did, man. And I I honestly I, I know I've been really down the last couple episodes. I think there is some really cool stuff that's going to happen in gaming. There was a sweet code in uh, spiritual successor that was launched on Kickstarter. There's a lot of cool stuff, and we have a lot more to talk about these coming weeks. It's just a weird place where I think you know till September. I don't even know the next game I'm going to buy. September is a uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater uh, One and Two HD cl- uh, remake. So yeah, I mean till then I, I don't even have a game I'm looking forward to. Um, so just, just strange. Do you have anything that you, uh, you feel like you're excited for, for the, uh, uh next couple months? I, I mean, I'm like, I'm semi excited about Avengers, but I don't know oh, if yeah, I'm going to be buying that. that yet. I might be waiting until like that is po- a possible like Black Friday or holiday sale to pick that one up. I, yeah, I, I don't have any feelings about that right now, man. Yeah. Well, We appreciate y'all for joining us, and we will be back on the soon, soon. Peace. Yeah.